Welcome to another episode of uh, Feeling the Blake Podcast, there, eh? Hey. I'm here with Jose Robles. Yes, that is me. It's weird, Jose. We woke up with these weird, strange accents. Don't sound too much like ourselves. I know, it's rather strange. I, I really don't know where that actually came from, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'm going to talk about foreign accent syndrome. It seems I've went from Canadian to Scottish. Well, that's rather odd. Uh, I'm, I mean, I've always been from England as long as I know, but... Uh... Well, let's talk about foreign accent syndrome. Okay, let's talk. So foreign accent syndrome is a medical condition in which patients develop speech patterns that are perceived as a foreign accent. Hmm. It is different from their native accent without having acquired it in the perceived accent's place of origin. Me, I hail from Ocean City, Maryland. (laughs) The fact that I have a Scottish accent, people think I'm playing a bit of a hoax, eh? But guess what? I just hit my head one day, and next thing I know, I woke up and I had this Scottish accent, oh. even though I've never been over to Scotland. Well, that's just bloody wild. That's the home of me native breaches. Huh. So, foreign accent syndrome usually results from a stroke, but can also develop from head trauma, migraines, or developmental problems. The condition was first reported in 1907. And between 1941 and 2009, there were only 62 recorded cases. Well, like, when these people just wake up with these random accents, do you think that they can choose which one, or do they they just wake up with a random accent that they have? I think maybe half of the time they might be developmentally skewed. You think? Maybe. Or are they faking it? I think they just might be faking. I don't tell you, I'm not probably faking it. So, its symptoms result from distorted articulatory planning and coordination processes. And although popular news articles commonly attempt to identify the closest regional accent, speakers suffering from foreign accent syndrome acquire neither a specific foreign accent nor any additional fluency in any foreign language. So, they develop it from the, the closest accent from where they live, is that... Is that what- is that what you mean? I guess develop... I don't know. From where they inhabit. So say, like, us, we're from Ocean City, Maryland. So, like, if we were to develop this, uh, you know, this this syndrome, would we talk like Jerseyans or something? I definitely wouldn't be talking like I'm from Scotland. Obviously not. We're, not, we're, we're never near Scotland. But if we're, guess, in Ocean City and we're trying to develop the closest, nearest accent, which one has a big influence in Ocean City, Maryland today? Uh... Well, I mean, I guess I'll be saying y'all a lot and just, like, I don't know, like, something out for the world. Ow! Well, y'all, I've been uh, down here in the south for a little bit of the days. I guess I'll be developing more of the southern style of talking when I like to speak my words. Because, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't ride a horse, but I do own a car. And my car is very environmentally friendly. I'm one of those cowboys <laughs> that cares about the ecological system out here. So... <laughs> Its symptoms resulted from distorted articulatory planning. What does that mean? Does that mean if I hit my head and I'm not educated, do I start speaking fluent German? Well, despite unconfirmed news report in 2010 that a Croatian speaker had gained the ability to speak fluent German after emerging from a coma, hmm. there has been no verified case where a patient's foreign language skills have improved after a brain surgery. Hmm. So imagine you bump your head. Next thing you know, you're you know. talking a whole nother land that you've never even visited. Exactly. There has been reports of Ch- of an English woman talking like a Chinese woman just because she bumped her head. Is that true? It's really ridiculous to think. Huh. Now, have you come to the cowboy accent? I have not. I'm still uh, just I'm British. I told you from this from the beginning. How hard do I have to hit you in the head with a horseshoe until you figure out that you are not smarter than a fifth grader? My just, just, just lightly, I believe. Okay, just slightly. Well, let's talk about some signs and symptoms. So, to the untrained ear, those with the syndrome sound as though they speak their native languages with a foreign accent. For example, an American native speaker of English might sound as though he spoke with a southeastern English accent, or a native speaker English speaker from Britain might speak with a New York American accent. However, researchers at Oxford University have found that certain specific parts of the brain were injured in some foreign accent syndrome cases. University had found that 
when this brain was injured, indicating that the particular parts of the brain control various linguistic functions, and damage could result in altered pitch or mispronounced syllables, causing speech patterns or to be distorted in a non-specific manner. Contrary to popular beliefs, the individuals with FAS exhibit their accent with any effort. These individuals feel as if they are suffering from a speech disorder. Hmm. More recently, there is mounting evidence that the cerebellum, which controls motor function, may be crucially involved in some cases of foreign accent syndrome, reinforcing the notion that speech pattern alliteration is mechanical and thus nonspecific. Hmm. I really like talking in my southern accent. So, is when people hit their cerebellum, is that when they, uh, you know, is that controlling their, mo- their not just their motor functions, but their, uh, you know, their vocal? That's where they believe. That the speech pattern of alliteration, the way I'm talking with my pauses and my speech preferences, uh-huh. are based on mechanics and not specific. So they don't go to a specific part of the brain. Seems like just all the brain's functions working together. A little piece uh-huh. gets thrown off. Next thing you know, you're riding two seats on a saddle. Oof. You don't want two seats on a saddle, son. Yeah, bloody Unless hell, that girl man. wants to get deathly close to you. <laughs> the best part about speaking with a South accent, raised from the South, but born in Ocean City, Maryland, let uh-huh. me tell you something. What's that? You can get so many words pronounced wrong and you still sound right. Yip, 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 yip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's put a dip in, son. So when you focus on the perception of a foreign accent, it's likely to be a case of pareidolia on the part of the listener. Nick Miller, professor of motor speech disorders at Newcastle University, has explained the notion that sufferers speak in a foreign language is something that is in the ear of the listener rather than the mouth of the speaker. It is simply that the rhythm and the pronunciation of speech has changed. British singer George Michael claimed that after awakening from a three-week-long coma in 2012, he temporarily had a West Country accent. Now, a lot with foreign accent syndrome, people hit a permanent change. They don't do a temporary change like this man has has, has experienced. So you look at something like that. How far, like how sensitive is the brain? I mean, we look at this, and you, you talk about bumping your head in the night. And Next then, thing you know, you're speaking a whole other accent. Your mom does not recognize your voice on the phone. I mean, you still kind of sound like you, but who is this damn accent, and why is it so fucking fluid? And the thing is, it's 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 permanent. You know, it doesn't. It never goes away. That once you get this, develop this, it stays with you for the rest of your life. And also criticisms. Think about people coming after you saying you're faking it. That's a fake accent. If, talk like you really talk. If people looked at me and they see a Hispanic man. With a British accent, I just feel like people judge me all the time. You know, when when I just go around and I can't even go to Walmart and order a pizza without them expecting a little white boy and a fucking Mexican man comes up. You know, it's I'll difficult. I tell you one thing, son. You came up to me speaking like how you talking today. I'm gonna tell you something. You would scare the daylights out of me. <laughs> I'll believe in Christ again. Okay. Let's talk about some diagnosis. So, since the syndrome is very rare, it takes a multiple disciplinary team to evaluate the syndrome and diagnose it, including speech language pathologists, neurolinguists, neurologists, and neuropsychologists and psychologists. So, in 2010, Verhoeven and Marine identified several subject, subtypes of foreign accent syndrome. They described a neurogenic, developmental, psychogenic, and mixed variant neurogenic FAS as the term used when FAS occurs after central nervous system damage. Developmental FAS is used when the accent is perceptible as an early age. Children who have always spoken with an accent. Psychogenic FAS is used when FAS is psychologically induced, associated with psychiatric disorder or clear psychiatric traits. The term mixed FAS is used when patients develop this disorder after neurological damage, but the accent change has such a professional or profound impact on the self-perception and identify that they will modify or enhance the accent to make it fit in with the new persona. People with multiple personality disorders, they tend to kind of morph their voice or do a type of accent to display that character that they believe is a real entity being a part of themselves. That's right. How far? Do you think maybe the best people who experience such a trauma like this should probably dive into the world of acting because they can act a whole different way and play so many more characters with a believable syndrome that affects your change? Well, you see, that's the thing, because I feel like if, I don't know about acting, but I could see a voice acting thing, maybe. You know, if they wanted to be in the new Batman, you know, animated film, well, maybe they could play the Joker because they have this, you know, crazy accent. Or maybe, uh, 
you know, maybe they could play, uh, you know, SpongeBob and something in the next movie that comes out. How far are you willing to watch SpongeBob? And a different accent. Imagine. I mean, just imagine. You're looking at so many different things going on with SpongeBob, first of all. First of all, if SpongeBob, the voice actor to SpongeBob, randomly his voice changed to a whole other thing that a kid could not understand. He started speaking, SpongeBob started speaking with a southern accent. You're losing your job, sir. If you don't have the educational SpongeBob laugh when I'm watching my tunes in the morning, you are totally taking out the fun of eating my bowl of Frosted Fruity Flakes with this amazing sponge under the seat talking with these magical creatures uh, well i see what you mean but i'm talking like you know on a on a friday afternoon when i'm just sitting eating my crumpets and drinking some tea i mean it's kind of i, I prefer to hear a uh, spongebob in an accent more similar to mine you know i'd rather i'd rather you think you, know, you find of, some similarities with it you'd I be do. able to resonate a little bit more with it I, I do I mean because I, I mean Spongebob was a great character and I, I strive to be like him one day I mean, look at him he's had the same job for 18 years now I mean that's dedication it seems like one of the symptoms that kind of go on with the uh, foreign accent syndrome when they hit their head and it happens to change their speech is the patient starts to move their jaw or their tongue differently which starts to create a type of accent and this different speech pattern kind of seems hard for your brain to go back into its old old place of thinking so your brain's trying to look for a new concept of a speech pattern, and it remembers one that might be close by to your region or origin, and next thing you know, you start talking like them. Next thing you know, your brain learns that as that's the right way to speak, and then you have to try and unlearn it. It's so hard to try and re-unlearn those things. Well, that's pretty crazy considering that I'm from Mexico and I have a British accent. Maybe you were talked to by a British man, or you had a British nanny, or some maybe babysitter, that kind of experience in your life. Maybe you had a British neighbor you don't know too much about. Those right. impacts, those small things that are sit sitting down deep in your subconscious, uh -huh. you think about those? Those are I impactful on you. Now, I did have a southern neighbor. He was a nice gentleman, you know. He didn't ride a horse, which uh -huh. is kind of weird, but, you know, you know, where we lived at the time, that's what happened. That's pretty wild. Back where I'm from, we only ride horses to play polo. Polo? Uh -huh. What is the polo? Is that oh. even a sport? It is. It is. I bet your football involves the soccer ball that we all make fun of. Hey, do you not like football? Football is amazing. I play it at the polo. Sir? When, when Daddy and I at the mansion. You can take your Guadalajalan ass out my door, okay? I got spurs on my boots. You got British tongue in your mouth. I don't like them. To make me get my guards out here. Oh, Lord. So let's talk about the history. The condition was first described in 1907 by the French neurologist Pierre Marie. And another early case was reported in a CISIC study in 1919 conducted by German internationalist L.O.S. Pick. 1859-1945. Other well-known cases of the syndrome have included one that occurred in Norway in 1941 after a young woman, Astrid. I suffered a head injury from shrapnel during an air raid. After apparently recovering from the injury, she was left with what sounded like a strong German accent and was shunned by her fellow Norwegians. Imagine getting hit with shrapnel. Next thing you know, you talk in a funny accent. Hmm. Society and culture. Cases of foreign accent syndrome often receive significant media coverage, and cases have been reported in the popular media as resulting from various cases, including stroke, allergic reaction, or physical injury, and migraines. A woman with foreign accent syndrome was featured on both Inside Edition and Discovery Health Channel's Mystery ER. In October 2008 and in September 2013, the BBC published an hour-long documentary about Sarah Colwell, a woman from Devon whose Chinese foreign accent syndrome resulted from a severe head injury. In 2016, a Texas woman, Lisa Alamia, was diagnosed with foreign accent syndrome when following a jaw surgery. She developed what sounded like a British accent. Alan Spencer, a woman from Indiana who has foreign accent syndrome, was interviewed on the American public radio show Snap Judgment. In Season 2, Episode 12 of the American television series, Heart of Dixie, one storyline revolves around a character, Annabeth, Nass, and a man she's attracted to named Oliver who has a foreign accent syndrome. Also in the TV show, Screen Queens, a female patient has the syndrome which they become very contagious to one of the three major characters in the show. Now what is your overall take on foreign accent syndrome? It is an actual syndrome that people do not believe. Well, you know, I feel like it could easily be faked. I feel like some, like an actor could easily just, you know, slip into something and just be like, oh yeah, this is how I talk because 
I got hit in the head with a water bottle the other day. You know, so I feel like it could easily be faked by somebody like that. But I don't see why it would. You know, speaking the rest of your life in a foreign accent, what gain do you have from it? Clout? Well, let me tell you something. I really hope one day my accent goes back, but the real possibility is it will not happen. Sadly, unless I can sit there and bash my head against a rock, my brain may never get hit the same that changes my tone of accent. So I might be sounding like a southern man in self. Holy crap. Ah. Uh, well, that was weird. Dang, that was wild. It, it, dude, just taking the time to look at a foreign accent syndrome and being able to realize, like, there's a type of disorder out there where you hit your head hard enough and the brain changes, really brings yeah. the sensitivity of someone's brain changing. Uh, Imagine that, dude. Like, especially your whole. Especially something is, like, sensitive. I don't even know if it's sensitive, your linguistics, like, how you talk. Like, if you can hit your head hard enough and the speech or uh, your, your eyesight is gone. Uh, how hard is it you hit your head hard enough the next thing you know you talk differently that's yeah. just so drastic but it's so yeah. much of a real thing it's a real yeah. possibility that we all need to focus on True. and I mean foreign accent syndrome is a real thing you can look it up people out there and get some research behind it it's definitely funny to try and sound like and keep an accent for a long period of time you know but the fact that there's people out there that suffer from it it's hard to tell who's the fakers and who are the real people there are people out there that have faked it and they have been caught in it but there's people that literally experienced this thing and their whole life has changed they've had to adapt it and they had to make a new voicemail like things of this mm -hmm. sort just to be able to kind of function and kind of cope with everything that's going on in their life just wild stuff look up foreign accent syndrome and thanks for trying to bear through this episode of fill in the blank podcast <laughs>